This is Ryan from Movie Nerds and welcome to our special behind the scenes look at one of the biggest action movies of all time. This is Predator, the history of a hunter. Predator started out as a response to a joke. Apparently right after Rocky IV was released, the joke around Hollywood was that Rocky had defeated everybody possible on Earth and should a fifth film be made, he would need to fight an alien. Screenwriters Jim and John Thomas ran with this and wrote the first draft titled Hunter. Joel Silver and 20th Century Fox picked up the script and Predator was born. Predator is an action classic filled with Arnold Schwarzenegger one-liners and fantastic creature effects by Stan Winston Studios, but it was a long road before the mandible mouth appeared. Originally, the Predator was going to look completely different. When the Predator started production, Boss Films were contracted to design and create the titular creature. Boss Films, founded by visual effects veteran Richard Edlund, after his departure from ILM, had made a name for himself with creating practical effects for Ghostbusters in 1984. I know exactly what to do. Now stay close. Do exactly as I say. Get ready. Ready? Get her! The original design, whilst looking completely out of this world, didn't end up being exactly what the production needed. The leg design ended up being impractical, not really allowing the Predator to jump or even move the way that it was originally envisioned. And amazingly, Jean-Claude Van Damme was cast as the creature in this form. This was one of his first jobs in Hollywood. However, he hated that he couldn't see his face on screen and after numerous battles with director John McTiernan, he was fired off set. And if you're wondering why the suit is red, well, this is how they shot the scenes where the Predator was using his cloaking device, as most of the scenes were shot in the jungle, which made it next to impossible to use the standard blue or green screen key. Ultimately, after shooting the first two acts of the film, the creature wasn't working the way that it was originally intended, and then the filmmakers then enlisted Stan Winston Studios and his crew to design and build a new creature. Stan Winston Studios was a powerhouse in Hollywood, creating practical effects and creatures for Aliens, The Terminator, and Edward Scissorhands. Once Stan Winston Studios got involved, the creature started to really take form. Stan had just done this before, and he knew how to go about it, and, and it was just a, a very different experience working with it. And on a flight home from Japan, Stan Winston was seated next to Terminator director James Cameron. On an airplane, flying to Japan with Jim Cameron sitting next to me and uh, while I was on this uh, airplane flight to, to Japan I was sketching concepts for the Predator. Jim Cameron looked over to me and says, you know, I always wanted to see something with mandibles. And I went, oh really? Well, so what? With the new creature design came a new performer. Seven foot two actor Kevin Peter Hall was cast and enlisted in bringing the Predator to life. Let's get Kevin, who can in fact work in a suit, who is an actor, who can create a performance, can create a character. And here is a guy who is huge, and next to Arnold would make Arnold look like a peanut. The costume was not without its challenges. It was heavy and off balance. With the full mask on, Kevin couldn't see, and in one take, it accidentally punched Schwarzenegger in the face during a fight scene. This scene can still be seen in the movie today. But what good is a villain if he doesn't have a great set of heroes to go up against? Arnold Schwarzenegger and his crew, which included Jesse Ventura, Bill Duke, Carl Weathers, and even the director of the 2018 reboot, The Predator, Shane Black. These actors sweated themselves silly in the jungle. Not only from the heat, but from trying to prove themselves in front of Arnold. All the actors would wake up at 4am and do rigorous weight training and running through the hot jungle. And at times, some of the actors would even wind up sick or just exhausted before a single camera had even started rolling for the day. Arnold absolutely loved this and even played jokes on Jesse Ventura. The biggest thrill for me was when we hit wardrobe and I happened to view Arnold's wardrobe tape and when my arms taped out one inch bigger than Mr. Olympia's, that made Jesse Ventura feel pretty good. Well, I'm very happy about that because then my joke worked because I told the wardrobe department they should tell him that so I can bet him a bottle of champagne afterwards when he comes to the gym. He came to the gym two days later and he says, you know something, Arnold? We should measure our arms. Who has bigger arms? I said, of course, we should. I said, let's bet a bottle of champagne. He says, of course, we should. And then we measured it and my arm was three inches bigger than his. What the fuck? Producers wanted Sonny Landon to play the role of Billy, but it wasn't without its problems. 
Sonny was a hoot. The insurance company wouldn't let us hire him unless we got him, got a bodyguard for him. Now, the bodyguard was not to protect Sonny. The bodyguard was to protect other people from Sonny. So we had this six foot eight inch tall giant man who just had to follow Sonny around 24 hours a day the entire time he worked in the movie and make sure that Sonny never misbehaved. Predator went on to be a massive success for everyone involved and with a budget of only $19 million, it made over $98 million worldwide. And it secured its chance to make another two sequels, a spin-off with the Aliens franchise, and another Predator film on the way. My name's Ryan, and this is Predator, the history of a hunter. If you love this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below with what you want to see us take you behind the scenes of next time with the making of.